Uh, I love talking hockey with him, and I treasure his friendship. I'm talking about the great Doc Emmerich. Doc, good morning. How are you today? I'm doing well. How about yourself, and did you dust off that chair next to yourself on opening day? I did, and at Doc, it was so sad you couldn't make opening day this year. That's our tradition. You always come in and sit next to me at the Pirates opener. Unfortunately, you couldn't get there this year. Yeah, I messed up this year, but I'll try to do better next year. But uh, we're off winning two out of three over the Dodgers. If we sweep the Reds, we're 500 through the 15th of May. That's not bad. Oh, uh, Not well, bad. I'm going to ask I, you. Uh, uh, there's probably more on your mind this morning than that. Well, I'm going to ask you about that uh, in a moment. But i got to start. Doc, our town's in an uproar over the Truba hit on yeah. Crosby last night. No penalty called. Sid knocked out. I'm wondering if he's going to come back in this series. You know his history of concussions. What did you think of the hit? Well, seeing the play live speed, Sid looked off balance, and he got he got him as he was off balance. And then when I had the advantage of seeing it slowed down, Truba was pushing his stick out to reach the puck. You, you guys have probably dissected this over and over, and it looked like he made contact with Sid's skate, got him off balance, and then his stick-holding arm is what got him. couple things. And I defer to a former player because I was watching Hockey Night in Canada last night uh, during the intermissions. Uh, I live on the border of Michigan and Canada, so I can bring that in. And Kevin BX, a Bowling Green guy, uh, who played a hitting game, is talking about this. And he said if Truba was going to get him, he would have used his free arm and not the one holding the stick. And usually in the cases of review, and uh, I just heard that Elliot Friedman was was uh, twittering, you probably have heard this too, that player safety is not going to have a hearing over this, and that usually means nothing further is going to come. But anyway, continuing, if a player is turning or moving and not stationary when the contact is made, they usually give the benefit of the doubt to the person making contact. So I may be wrong, but I don't think there's going to be anything more. Uh, it's it's sad for the sport because he's our best player, and he's had a wonderful year, and all of those other things that are said not only in Pittsburgh, but grudgingly in other cities through roster envy. But it is a collision sport, and this is one of those things that happened. And even though people in Pittsburgh are mad and uh, they, they'll target uh, Truba and a number of other people tomorrow night if Truba is not suspended, um, life went on. And, you know, the fact that Jake Gensel got that goal late in the period and they had a whole intermission to try to recover, and there were just some really awful penalties that they took in the third. That cost them, too. So uh, there's a best of seven for a reason, and none of my philosophical chat, philosophical chat is going to help anybody feel any better this morning. So I probably should just stop there. But uh, his absence did have a great effect, especially in the second period. And Adam Fox of the Rangers said just as much after the game. When he was gone, everything changed for both teams because he changes things when he's out there making a difference. Doc, so it, that's it, what I got for you. I'm sorry. He Nope, nope. Uh, that's why I called you. I wanted your opinions. You know, he's, he doesn't slow down, though, Sid, does he? He's had a spectacular year, and I think he's been the best player in the playoffs so far, multiple points in each of the first four games. And it's just yeah, so he, sad if he is going to be out because he's missed so much time because of these head injuries. Yes. And, and that's been the case in the past. And the only thing that we have to draw on, because we, we really don't know a whole lot right now, and uh, all we have to draw on is, is history. Isn't that the case with all of us who carry pens and pads or computers yep. or, or watch these things and we draw on history? We draw on the history uh, that tonight Toronto has not won a playoff series since ABC carried the games in 2004 and Barry Melrose and I worked together doing Toronto and the Islanders. <laughs> 2004. That's how long it's been. And they've got a chance to actually, they've got two chances to try to win a playoff series for the first time since 2004. Why? History. Why, that's all we got to draw on. And it's a penalty kill. It's all meringue until they drop the puck tonight in Tampa. And it's the same situation that we have when we talk about Sid is history when yet we don't really know and we won't know until word comes to us and everybody that knows Sid I mean has been around him 
loves the guy. Why? Because he doesn't do anything wrong. He plays hard. He trains hard, first on the ice, always working on his game. The first couple of years he came into the league, he was terrible on face-offs. Now he's not. Why? Because he worked hard to improve. Could he have taken games off? Could he have been a lazy guy? Yeah, he could have, and he'd still be a star. But he didn't do that. He doesn't make mistakes on social media. He's a good citizen in the town. He's everything that you want a role model to be, but yet he doesn't ask anyone to adopt him as a role model. He's just a good human being who's blessed with God-given talent. And isn't it good that he's a part of your city? Well, we are fortunate here, going all the way back to Mario, as you well know. Uh, Doc, let's talk goaltending here. First of all, Shesterkin, what do you think happened to him in games three and four, and do you think maybe he might have found his groove a little bit last night? Oh, perhaps. He's 22 years old, and he had a good season, and he's just been nominated for the Hart Trophy of MDP, and it, it takes a lot for a goaltender to be nominated for that. That's most valuable to his team, and he certainly was. But in the first two games... He had to make 119 saves. I don't care how old you are. That's a lot. That's, that's nine periods of hockey in three nights. You get one day off in between. And then you go into Pittsburgh, and you've only won one of the two games. And it was a well-known person around Pittsburgh who uh, I can't name because I didn't ask him for permission to use his words as we were talking last night. The kid probably never had his name chanted before in his lifetime in other arenas, and he probably never had had to sit at the bench after he'd been pulled and had the crowd chant, we want Igor, uh, that they wanted him to come back in after things were going south for his replacement. I mean, he's probably not had that before, so that was another experience. There are a lot of things that have been so good in his life, and so this was the first major setback so we'll see how it goes yes he he was much better last night and yes his crowd at madison square garden encouraged him from the very beginning of the game but you know there are still some holes in in the offense for the rangers that the penguins had plugged up but the real question will be can they continue to do that because at some point um you think that that the the guys that are, are the big sticks for the Rangers are going to break free. And uh, the Penguins guys have done that. Jake has just been magnificent. Hey, uh, Sullivan called him a superstar the other day, and I'm having a hard time arguing with him. Doc, how, we're talking to Doc Emmerich here on the Cook and Joe show. How about the Penguins goaltending situation, Doc? Uh, Louis Domingue comes in. Obviously, the definition, I would say, of a journeyman becomes an instant called hero by stepping in cold and the second overtime of game one ends up winning it, but has given up, uh, you know, almost four goals a game in his four starts. I'm thinking it might be time to go back to Jari. If you're at all convinced Jari is healthy and ready to go. How do you look yeah, at the Penguin the... situation? No, no. Yeah. And, and you know, uh, better than I, because I'm not talking with people there. I, I don't know. And, and I just wait until folks like yourself tell me what the, what the current status is. And, I know the Penguins stayed overnight in New York, and there was a press conference this morning, and we won't know until maybe they skate later today if they plan to do that or uh, until tomorrow morning what the status of all this is. But it has been a year, a spring, hasn't it, when um, Pat Quinn, the late Pat Quinn, the legendary coach, when he and I were together in the American League in Portland, Maine, he used to always say, for every injury a star can be born. And that star may last a long time, or it may not. But we've seen that often through the playoffs. Anyone with gray hair or no hair at all, like myself, will talk about John Drews of the Washington Capitals or Chris Contos of the Los Angeles Kings, guys that flared for just a brief moment but are still remembered for the time that they had during a playoff run for a certain team. And those things are happening with goaltenders now this year. Jake Ottinger has just been magnificent for Dallas this year. And he's in a low-scoring series, which helps. 
uh, with Calgary, and it, it goes back to Dallas for a sixth game. But these are things that happen with injuries, and, and um, some teams like Carolina, I mean, you fully expected that, that they were going to have Anderson ready to play, and, and no, not even a chance. And so they've gotten into a position where they can clinch in Boston tonight, not using a goaltender that they figured they were going to at the beginning. What, uh, you know, I give Mike Sullivan, I, I think he's a tremendous coach, Doc. Oh, yeah. And I and think he'll, he'll do he'll, too. Yeah, I, absolutely. I'm sorry I interrupted no, you. No, I was Go just going to say, you know, even back in the cup years with him in 16 and 17, the way he was able to use both Mark andre Fleury and Matt Murray, and he's not afraid to make, you know, He's going to do what he thinks is best, and he's going to live with the results. That's why I'm wondering if maybe he goes back to his best guy, Jari. Yeah, he might very well. And it's also the reason that I don't think Penguin fans, even though Sid may be absent for the sixth game, the combinations that he will have time to put together rather than makeshift during the course of the game. And uh, he, he's been a master at, at uh, cobbling lines together either makeshift during the game like he had to last night or when he has time to just weigh how he's going to shake down the different combinations. And remember, tomorrow night he gets last change. And so it's probably not going to be, as it was, the vantage ad against Crosby. He'll be able to decide what he wants to do uh, defensively against uh, Zibanejad and, and that group. The real danger group for the Rangers has been their kids. Uh, and so he'll be able to weigh that too. You know, how does how does he go? Having center depth helps. Having Malkin at center, having Carter at center, that helps. But uh, all of this is a smokescreen right now for the fact that maybe they will not have Crosby for tomorrow night. But you look at a series in which uh, uh, Chris Kreider has just two goals and Artemi Panarin has just two goals, and you would have thought through five games they would have relied more on them. Uh, to provide the big scoring than that. Doc, do you believe in karma? 30 years ago, 1992, Game 6, the Penguins eliminated the Rangers at home. This was the series that Adam Graves slash Lemieux broke his hand, knocked him out. So 30 years coming up tomorrow, same exact date, maybe no Sid. Can they eliminate the Rangers in six at home? It, it's kind of an interesting karma question. Oh, yeah, it sure is. And... Uh, you know, you flip a coin because none of us know, and that's an understatement, but these have been such evenly matched playoffs. You could probably say yes, and, and most people would nod and say, yeah, he's right. Or you could say no, and you'd say, well, he's crazy, but he might be right because we have had a hard time predicting all of these. Last year, the Colorado Avalanche rolled through the first round with a sweep, and they won the first two games against uh, the Golden Knights. And they thought, these guys are rolling right through to the final. And they lost the next four. You just, it, it's a hard thing to predict. And I know we all see these ads before the games are on television for all of these wagering sites. But uh, I am not tempted in the, in the least way to take part in any of those. Uh, not because it's an inclination I've always had, because I've, I've not, but just because it's a real hard thing to win. I, you, you, it's very hard to predict hockey. Very hard. Doc, if the Penguins win or the Rangers are going to take on the winner of Carolina and Boston, how do you see those that series ending up? Each, I guess each home team has won, and Boston will try to hold serve tonight. Yeah, it's a tough one uh, because uh, Boston – has uh, reunited their top three uh, guys again for the last three games, and it's and it's worked really well, uh, particularly at home and particularly when there are power plays. And so sometimes uh, you have, even though the league doesn't want to hear this, you have some referees that are inclined to call more penalties than the other, even though they feel like everybody is carbon copy and they're standardized. Some will call fewer penalties than others. And so if there are a lot of power plays, I like Boston's chance to force a seventh game because they are at home. They can get that top line of Marchand and Bergeron and uh, Pasternak out together. And they can get them, of course, if there are a lot of power plays on the power play and maybe force a seventh game. But I think Carolina's time has come. Even though they've been around and they've sniffed around and they've, they've gone – deeper each time and under Rod Brindamore in his fourth year they've made the playoffs every year 
I think this time they have learned from past experience and they're going to get through this. All right, Doc Emmerich, before I let you go, baseball is a beautiful sport. The Pirates go into Cincinnati and play the 3-22 and 22 Reds and, yeah. lose, and lose two out of three. They come yeah. home and play the best team in baseball with the second-highest payroll, and they take two out of three. And did you happen to see, I, I don't know if you see anything on Twitter, Clint Hurdle sent something out last night. Clint Hurdle, of all people, and he goes, this is a message for the Dodgers. Your poverty franchise just lost a series to the Pittsburgh Pirates. <laughs> he had to rub their nose in it a little bit. Can you believe it? Good for Clint. Well, we win these four and we're back even, but I have great admiration for Ben Charrington. I mean, this farm system was in the bottom half when he arrived, and he has a rebuild and a championship in Boston. I realize surrounded by different players, but uh, they're now number three, and I, I, I have this now, and early this week, the starting pitchers in AAA Indy had the lowest ERA, not just in their league, but in all the minor leagues. And if we get this guy, Ronzi Contreras, when he's ready to come up, that'll be a right-hander who can go more than five innings. So I have hope. Um, I, people can laugh at me if they want because this is my 64th year cheering for the team. But we got to have hope. And there's some real coherent reason in my mind to think that there's reason for hope. So I'm going to be watching. Doc, you've always had hope. Sometimes it hasn't been. Sometimes it hasn't been. Well, most of the time, okay, almost all of the time, it hasn't been justified. Yeah, Jack Swarinski, I like a lot. He hit another one yesterday. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. <laughs> Doc, stay. Always good to talk to you, Ron. Stay well, my friend. And I love talking hockey with you, and I love your friendship. The best to you and your family, and maybe we'll hook up if the Penguins keep going a little ways. Okay. You take care. Thank you. All right, the great.